the cordis. Everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. I'm just <clears throat> going to make a quick announcement that we have had a power outage here at the town hall in the Tonsville area. Hopefully we don't have another one. We were on generator power. Now we're off, so hopefully that'll stay and televised and the lights and everything will stay on. Uh, fire evacuation uh, right behind you, right straight behind you, right out those doors out into the uh, park or down this flight of stairs to your left, down the stairs and out the back. And please, if there is an emergency, walk away far away building as possible. The secretary, please call the roll. Yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Louis Fiore. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. <coughs> Linda DeGray. Absent. <coughs> John Petronella is here. Uh, Francis Alimo. Here. Kiran Majmudar. Here. Kenneth Holinsky. Here. Vinny Garillo. Here. Christian D'Antonio. Here. And Nicholas Lefakis. Here. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I'll let you know. Um, Full-time member Linda Gray is not here tonight, so it is Mr. Lefakis's, Commissioner Lefakis's turn to sit in as a voting member tonight, so you're voting tonight. Again, Mr. Grillo and Mr. D'Antonio, you can certainly participate in all the discussions. As you know, you just uh, won't be able to vote tonight. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of January 26th. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Higley in a second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Lefakis. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes? Mr. Chair, I'll be yep. abstaining. Yep. I'll be abstaining. Well. Yep, absolutely. I'll raise your hand. Right. Let the record show that there was seven, four, and two abstains. Commissioner Limo and Commissioner Holinsky have abstained. Everybody got a copy of the town attorney's report? Yep. Yeah. Now we used to part public participation. <clears throat> At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the Commission, or any matter where a decision of the Commission may be pending, and also includes any pending legal activity. Is there anyone who would like to come forward to the Commission to speak? Is there anyone who would like to come forward to the Commission to speak? Seeing none. Close public participation. Next, there's no bond releases. Now we get to the part where we were going to have a presentation. I'll just let uh, Lori Witten, our planning director, respond to that for Lodestar. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, they, we finally got in touch with a uh, Lodestar uh, team and yesterday, and they were like, oh, well, we could come in and do a presentation, and then we gave them the letter that you probably received from staff. Matt had um, compiled uh, some concerns that we had about the solar project, and quite honestly, we don't feel that this is, this is the commission that really has the greatest need for a presentation. And they were having a hard time getting their team together for tonight. It was literally 24 hours in advance. So I just said, look, we'll give you our comments for there, and we'll try to do another presentation for the Inland Wetlands Committee, because they're the ones that have the wetlands and the TE slopes and more of the concerned areas. So um, if that's OK with you, we, you know, uh, we could, if, if you would like, we could try to do a combined meeting. I just don't know if it will work. You could, we could always set it up as such, and then if you want to attend and comment, you can. So I'm just looking around just for some consensus or opinions on that. I think the last time we did talk about this, it was really, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting hoarse tonight. It was, you know, we, we had a concern, I think, about the escarpments. I think a lot of us realized it really was an IWWA mm -hmm. situation, and we just wanted to be in support <clears throat> of their activities, of whatever they may do. <clears throat> Is that still basically the consensus? Does anyone feel the need that we want to have a joint meeting or just no. as long as it's documented that we're in support of whatever act, action or activity they would like to do, we're, we're in support of? Does that seem reasonable with everyone? So I think that's the consensus here. Okay, If you wonderful. can just keep us in the loop and keep us informed yes. of, you know, what's going on, I, I think it would be appreciative. Right. And, and basically for the aquifer protection concerns, we really just don't want any, you know, fueling. Yep over the aquifer or, you know, yep. car maintenance or anything like that. So, I mean, that that was really our yep. concerns 
with that aspect. And they, and they will probably have to come in front of us if, if the project continues for aquifer protection, or, or are they exempt from that because it's siting They would be exempt. From that also? Yeah, okay. I believe so, yes. Okay, that's interesting. So, but um, what I was informed today is that whatever our concerns are, just to forward them onto the siting council and, and to the applicant, and then that, that will be added at, in as a supplemental um, to the application before the siting council, and they will review and and look at every question. Okay. Yeah, Commissioner Montreal. Uh, this, <clears throat> these comments, do they go to Inland Wetland? Do they go to the right. applicant? So, so this, these are the, the comments through, s s Matt basically compiled them all. We've all been discussing this for a couple weeks now, but um, these are the comments that we have and concerns that we have to date. So we will be forwarding that on to them. All right. So to the siting go... council and to the applicant. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. And the Inland Wetland. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, right. Inland Let's get a copy yes. of that, too. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, just yeah. to quite, Commissioner Lamo? So yeah. I, I thought we really don't have jurisdiction over the siting council. They can just... We don't. We can we, tell them, but they don't have to listen to us. That's, really. that's exactly correct. But, so we, that's exactly correct, Commissioner Lamo. <laughs> <laughs> just like so, the telecommunication towers. Right. But having said that, they, we do have the ability yeah. to be able to at least uh, give them our concerns <laughs> about this, or if it was a telecommunication tower, right. the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Which are absolutely right. They yeah. can listen or they don't have to. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's what I thought. Thank you. Yep. All set? Everybody all set with that? Yeah. Staff, you're okay with that? Okay. Now we'll move on to new public hearings whenever the secretary is ready. Uh, yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Oh, uh, yep. We still need to take, open it and then table it again. Okay. We don't need to open it. You just need to table, table it. it. Yeah, but he should read it. He should read it so we sure. can table it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearings at the regular meeting on Thursday, February 9th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3054. 117 North Street, application for home occupation, excavation permit, and contractor storage yard. Joseph LaCourie, applicant, owner. Map 93, lot 15, plus map 100 uh, 6, uh, I 1 zone. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to table us to the next meeting. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Herlinski, okay. seconded by Commissioner uh, Higley to table this. Until the next meeting, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 But the record showed it was unanimous, 7 nothing to table uh, PH 3054 to the next meeting on mm -hmm. February 23rd. Move on to item B whenever the secretary is ready. Yes, Mr. Chair, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, February 9th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing number 3056, 281 Hazard Avenue, application to operate a retail, pharmacy, <coughs> retail specialty pharmacy, a CSI Pharmacy, applicant, Roby Realty, LLC owner, map 83, lot 59, HVBL zone. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Holinsky. We're now going to open this hearing. Is the applicant or the representatives here? Please come on forward. Uh, we just want to make sure the red, the red light's on and pull the mic as close to you as possible. Okay. I'm not sure the portables are working or not. Seems like it's working. Okay. If you could just identify yourselves for the record, please. Sure. I'm Roby Staples from Enfield, Connecticut, 1145 Enfield Street. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Williamson. I'm a pharmacist at CSI Pharmacy. And my name is Jennifer Sacco, and I'm the pharmacy manager of CSI Pharmacy. Thank you. If you could briefly, or more, more than briefly, whatever you like to uh, describe your project, please. Sure. So um, we're uh, both pharmacists at CSI Pharmacy. Um, we're a specialty pharmacy, so we're a little different than your average retail pharmacy or average chain pharmacy. We dispense specialty medications to um, patients with more rare conditions like bleeding disorders and um, autoimmune conditions. And so um, our company is based out of Nash, Texas, and we would like to open a location here in Enfield to better serve our local area. Um, our, company, our, our parent company actually dispenses medication all throughout the country. Um, so our goal in opening in Enfield is to better serve the local areas of Connecticut and um, Western Massachusetts. Thank you. <clears throat> Please, end. yeah. Go ahead. I just tried to say we got very lucky getting this company in town. You know, good taxpayer. 
and uh, a good business. And uh, these girls have done a lot of work just getting this thing all ready and come to the commission. And we've had help from Lori and Rick and your valuable time is appreciated. Thank you. Anything you'd like to add or? Yeah, so tell me, but thank you for your time. No problem. Any questions for the commission? Any questions for the commission? Yep. Yeah. Any questions for the from the commission? The only, only question I have just for the, for the record is if I'm not mistaken, this is the old Connecticut, uh, excuse me, Hazardville Water Company building on Hazard Avenue, correct? Yeah. Pardon me? This is, this is the old Hazerville Water Company building. Yes, I on, own the building. Yeah. But they, they lease it from me. Okay. Do you want to note for the record, with recommendation from staff, staff feels that if this is the use as operated as described, it will be suitable use for this site in this location. Okay. Any, any comments from staff? Uh, no, really. I mean, it's a kind of a perfect fit for the building and places more or less completely non-conforming in terms of today's requirements, but it's a very low key kind of a use. The scale I think is appropriate for the site. The parking should be sufficient. Um, shouldn't have any traffic issues at all. So it'd be nice to get the building occupied yeah. and, and up and running. So I did notice condition nine. There, there's, there's a detached garage on the site. Yeah. A detached garage. De yes, a detached. Yes. And, and this application. Which you're not <clears throat> going to use. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't. I don't uh, yeah. just, just to note that this is basically mostly mail service. Yeah. It's not your standard pharmacy. But you will have some people coming in, to, but it's mostly mail service. Right. Any other questions from the commission at this time? I'm going to, anyone from the public want to speak for or against? I'm only going to ask once since there's nobody here. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> sir, we got to have to have a little joke once in a while ourselves. <laughs> you want a motion to close? I want a motion to close, yes. So I move to close the public hearing. Motion made by Commissioner Higley to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Lefakis. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The public hearing is closed. Um, is there any questions among ourselves on this? Nope. Any final questions or concerns? Seeing none, the secretary, please proceed. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve public hearing number 3056, application to establish a specialty pharmacy use at 281 Hazard Avenue, Roby Realty, LLC owner, Jennifer Sacco, DBA, CSI pharmacy applicant, Jennifer Williamson, applicant's representative, map 83, lot 59, HVBL zone. Per the reference plans, reports, and application materials listed herein, and including a waiver of the site plan requirements with the following 16 modifications uh, and or conditions of the approval. Is there a second? Uh, second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Seeing no discussion, whenever you're ready for a roll call, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Lou Fiore. Four. Linda DeGray. I'm sorry, she's absent. Uh, Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Salimo. Four. Kiran Majbudar. Four. Kenneth Holinsky. Four. Nicholas Lefakis. Four. And John Petronella is four. The record showed it was a unanimous decision. You've been granted, and good luck with your project. Thank you so much. Thank you. How soon do you anticipate starting the operations? When do you anticipate starting? Uh, hopefully soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're ready to go. Oh, good luck. Good luck. You're good. And welcome. It's fine, thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to old public hearings. There isn't any. Moving on to new business, there is the one I am to, to discuss. And um, having been in a little bit of the email chain, it was brought to our attention by uh, senior staff here and uh, outside the planning department that we we need to have some attendance at the CROG meetings. And, I, and I, again, I'm looking at our two representatives. I know it's not your fault. There seemed to have been, I have a question on that, Lori, because I was following the email chain. So if if I may, I know you sent out um, uh, a posting of their regular scheduled meetings, which I believe are mostly Zoom now. They are all Zoom. Okay. 
And one of the things that you mentioned is, um, again, the PC meets on the second and fourth Thursdays. We all know that's when our meeting dates are. Mm -hmm. And you just check with the RPC, and they meet on the third Thursday. But then when you went on and you and the next chain up and you said they seem to be having their meetings on the fourth Thursday. They they had over the last year, the, the last three meetings were on the fourth Thursday. So we can't the, the, so, yeah. But their current schedule for the next year are the third Thursdays. They only meet four four times a year, I believe. And I so, lost so that. since yeah. Yeah, I have March 16th, uh, June 15th, September 21st, and November 16th. Yep. I don't know if they're Thursdays. I don't know if anyone has the, uh, the yep. third. They, they are, I believe they are all third, third Thursdays. Now, you know, we voted on our, our two liaisons, which are Mr. Petronella and Commissioner Alimo. The town council had to prove that. So I take it that information went to Krog. Mm -hmm. I assume it did. So the, the commissioners? With the, our liaisons. Right, right but... Their, their terms have expired. That's what this their is. Their terms will expire to the end of the year. We disappointed them in January, last a year from now. Oh, okay. They're two yeah. year. Yeah. They're two year appointments. Somebody told us that they had expired. So. Nope. They expire on 12 31 2023. The concern was that no one's been attending. So how can our commissioners attend when they don't get notified of the meetings? I mean, Krog isn't sending out notifications to our two commissioners. So this is this is the concern. Okay, so um, assuming Krog holds them yeah. on the third Thursday, yeah. it's just that our members have not been notified. You're not getting emails or anything. Nothing. I haven't like, gotten anything. And, and, and these are uh, these are Zoom meetings, so yeah. we should be getting an email invite, and we don't. Yes. I don't. I don't. I, I haven't gotten that. that. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. It'd just be it'd just be uh, Frank and John. Okay. It would just be okay. Frank and John. Okay, so um, I will reach out to them and make sure that they have your emails, and hopefully they continue to have meetings on the third rather than the fourth Thursday because the other ones they kept have this kept switching. These are during the day, correct? The business hours, right? I don't believe so. I think they're at night. Oh, they are at night. Okay, it used to be during the day. And 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 I guess the um, uh, other issue or favor I'll bring up is if you could please notify that senior staff member that. If, if Krog goes back to doing these on the fourth Thursday, well, you know, we're kind of a little bit out of luck here. I, you know, I'd hate to ask for a volunteer, someone to meet, leave, you know, miss our meeting to attend Krog. Exactly. Not that that's not important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Krog, the reason why this is brought up is there's things going on in the Krog mm -hmm. where we need, you know, mm -hmm. need, in, in a, in a, you know, I'm not so, faulting you guys. I know you guys weren't in the loop. Yeah. We need to, yeah. we need to be there. Yeah. And sometimes they, they have, you know, monies available and we'd like to help point them in the right direction for allocation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can if we can just make sure, Lori, that they have John and Frank's uh, Enfield email we'll address. Absolutely. And that. so that they get notified of the meetings. And if could you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if everyone has this. You were nice enough to send me the um, the schedule from Krog. Mm -hmm. Could you make sure these two guys get that same? Yeah. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Yep. All right, moving on. There's no old business. There's no other business. Enforcement reports. You did receive a ZEO report from Rick, and I think a supplemental memo as well. I think that was about the signage, right? Uh, yeah, Rick asked me just today to share with you that he has reached out to uh, Mr. Daigle and to a uh, gentleman, Mr. Lynch at Gilbane, about the two signs at JFK. Um, so he's actively working that. And then the second item he wanted to mention was um, just to let you know that there's a food truck festival that is proposed, um, I think, May 13, 14, at uh, Enfield Square. And he's going to process that as a zoning permit. They've had special events there before. So I think he just wanted to make sure that you guys knew. If Did you, you have, have a date on that, Matt? I think it was May 13 and 14. I'm, I've, got it. I've got the request in front of me. I'm looking at it. May 12th and 13th. 12th, 13th. Okay. It would be 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. both days. Didn't um, they do that last year? I think this is... Uh, this, so the... the 
the reason that we're bringing this up is because it's the first time that the food trucks are the main, main event. Okay. So last so. year was during a home show, I think. <clears throat> Guys. Uh, through a chair, through the chair. Oh, was it a little, the home show? Same, this is the yeah, same there, thing. There was something. They had some food trucks during the home show, I think. Yes. Right. So and during the, a car show, they had. Yeah. Right. There were a few events last year where food trucks were invited right. to join the event. This event is food trucks. Oh. That's why we just wanted oh. to make sure that you felt that this was. I mean, they'll only be there for two days. They are the main event. So. For a special event. For the special event, right. I, I think that, you know, it's at the mall. We've had all sorts of, of, of uh, activities and special events there before. Um, I, I think that it fits. You know, if they were doing this every day, that would be a whole different If we see thing. a trend, it's a whole different thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is everyone kind of, I'm looking here to see if anyone has any real agenda with that. This is a special event for food trucks. If we and see we a trend on this, then we have another issue. Yeah. Will they do an administrative? Uh, I, th I think I think that's the. They'd yeah. have to do the zoning permit and health review and everything, yeah. like everybody else. But we just wanted to let you be aware that this yeah. is occurring, just because it's a food truck yep. festival and yep. it's not um, a tent festival. Yep. And we have this different regulations <laughs> for cars. food trucks, as everyone knows. Yeah. 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 Commissioner Montender. Yeah, I think my. Not concerned, just a question for information. How did it go last year? Have we had any we, issues that anybody has? No. So no. It was nice and. All of the events last year were, were run very well and we never got any complaints, um, not even from the police. So. That's great. To the best of my knowledge, anyway. All right. Well, it's well, well organized. Thanks. Any questions on. Uh CEO's report that everybody got the spreadsheet. Everybody yep. took a look through. Everybody's good. Mm -hmm. JFK Science, we're working on it. <laughs> I told him that yeah, the I, I are okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Commissioner's correspondence. What, uh, uh, Commissioner Petronella. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I want to bring up uh, some correspondence that uh, I think we all received uh, regarding uh, the Western Connecticut Council of Governments. Uh, they're making... Um, uh, uh, it, it looks like that uh, they're urging um, uh, everyone to uh, get involved with this bill that's being raised uh, in the Connecticut legislature. It's Bill Number Six Five Five Eight, an act concerning the granting of variances by zoning boards of appeals. I don't know if if anybody had an opportunity to to go through it and and, and read it. I I did go through it this morning and. Uh, uh, I just wanted to discuss if this is something that we want to discuss and, and throw our support uh, or, or make make a motion to, uh, you know, throw support that, uh, you know, if, if we're, whether we're for or against it. Uh, and, and I don't know if, uh, you know, this is something that we want to discuss now or, or uh, Lori, what's your, what's your opinion on that? Have you had a chance to read it, Lori? Yet the it's a proposal that has had a I hearing. I have not read it um, verbatim. I've scanned it, but I was also on a two-hour um, webinar today where it was discussed. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and this was Connecticut Bar Association, um, Connecticut Association of Planning, so Planning, APA, and CASIO, which is Connecticut Association of Zoning Enforcement Officers. It was all three organizations that met today with, with just whoever decided to join the Zoom. Um, it's I, I think that um, what, I, what I'm hearing is that many other states have changed their variances to be similar to this. And basically what, what they said is that uses would still have to show a hardship, but um, area variances would not necessarily need to show a hardship, uh, but there would be other requirements. Um, there was pros and cons discussed today, and I haven't really looked at it closely enough to make my own decision. Um, we can, you know, have a conversation once everybody's looked at it, if you would like. Um, um, I, I think the idea of this is that they're trying to take hardship away from the decision making because 99.9% .9 of variances that are granted really don't have a hardship. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, this 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 is this is an Enfield. This is every ZBA across the nation. There is no. I mean, it's almost impossible to prove hardship. 
So um, that's kind of what I, the takeaway that I got from this afternoon. But, um, I, but also once I got off of that, I was on to something completely different. So I haven't really gone back to even think about it. I did a quick, I did, if you don't mind, John, I'm no, sorry. please. I did a quick review of it. I haven't dived into it. And, you know, being a policy wonk that I am, you know, I will. Um, it was seen to me that it also was um, shifting some of the powers from the planning zoning over to the ZBA, or did I misread part of that? I, I don't know. I actually asked the question about the special permit. Yes, because Thank you. yeah, and and I actually asked that in the chat, and I was told it was like, well, ZBAs already can do that. But I, what I was, gate, what, what I was seeing in there was that it would allow the ZBA to take all special or yeah. or push all the yeah, special the permits to them. I was like, that's how I read it. So. Too. Um, Again, I haven't uh, had a really good yeah, chance. Yeah. I just found out about it myself. So, um, you know, uh, Mary Ann Turner sent it out to everybody, which was great. Um, and, and we all should be concerned one way or the other. And, um, if you, you know, we could even maybe have a group meeting or something. So, well, I would highly suggest that. I know. So I don't think we should do anything tonight, John, to be honest with you, because a lot of people haven't read it. So you, I think you all got the email. Mm -hmm. Um, please make an attempt to read through it. Let's keep this or add this to the agenda. Mm -hmm. So maybe the next minute we could pick next meeting we could pick up some more discussion. In the meantime, Lori could ferret out what the ZBA would like to do, um, whether they would like to or they're concerned about it, whether they'd like to join us or whatever. And, but I would highly recommend that we read this and, and any questions, accumulate your questions, and let's pick this up next meeting. Unless somebody else wants to add something else tonight. Yep. Uh, I, I just want to add just something like I feel like I, I did read through it okay. and I feel like I'd like to just this is just a, a comment like I'd like to kind of look elsewhere to try to find more of like what it's trying to solve and what like the the context is of it is yeah. like we have the bill here we yeah. have uh, Western cogs yeah what's the intent yeah, interpretation right? of it, but yeah. what's the intent right so so I feel like that that's a big factor in it as and well and maybe Lori or Mac can kind of help us a little bit as over the next couple of weeks as you're hearing things find what's yeah, really going on behind the scenes here it's definitely front and center in the planning field yeah Commissioner Filmsky. yeah when did the email come through because I'm not, I'm not seeing it came through regular mail oh came to regular mail. regular email not Oh, your it regular came home through email? just oh. from Marianne. Yes, it came oh. through on the regular okay. email, uh, not the uh, planning and zoning email. Okay, all right. I'll I mean, go your non your non Enfield email. Correct. So, but, okay. it is but most of you got it. Yeah. Correct? yeah. Okay. Would you like me to send it to your PCC Please. email? I think we should do uh, we should do everything we can through Enfield.org and not personal emails. Even though I do appreciate that person sending it to us. You know, we should, yeah. if you can resend that, would be great. Yeah, I will do that. She have. Yeah, yeah, she, that's right. She did right. You're right. Yeah. Yep. So does that sound like a plan, everybody? Yep. Yep. Sure. Thank you. I'd just like to mention, uh, for Commissioner's correspondence, that Monday night, or maybe Lori was going to do it, so I'm probably going to steal her thunder. But oh, please. This, this coming Monday night, uh, town council is having their public hearing on the POCD at 6 o'clock at JFK. Yeah. Yes. Me too. So if anybody's watching or, you know, be honest, you, I'm going to go up. I'm going to, you know, I'm interested in what yeah. residents have to say. I'm not going to participate, but yeah. um, so please feel free to, to join if you like want to go. Monday. That's Monday night at JFK at 6. 6. And don't forget, we, will, we are going to have our own public mm -hmm. hearing right. on March 23rd. Yep. Any other commissioner correspondence or correspondence in general? Commissioner Lima? Yeah, through, through the chair yep. to Lori. And I, I brought this up several times and starting to annoy me a little bit. Um, the Enfield Mall, the main entrance, the lighting there has been out for over a year. Right. Now they've put up portable lighting okay. that nobody, tur nobody, turns, nobody turns it on. So I, I don't know if they pulled a permit for portable lighting, but I think back in 1970, whenever it was approved, or 69, there must have been um, requirements for parking lot lighting. So it, it should be a, a zoning violation. And it has to be addressed. It's, I think it's a public safety issue. It's very mm -hmm. dark there. And they put up these two mobile units, like these construction units. Figaro's has. No. Oh. No, the mall put them up. 
when did they put them up? I don't know. I, so, I just, I, yeah. one, I'd like to, I'm sorry, Mr. No, Chair. please, please, my guest. I would like to just clarify, what do you consider the main entrance? Because I, I don't friendless. remember hearing this. Yeah, I brought it up like three times. I remember you have issue, had, having issue with, with traffic lights. No, no, the, no, but I oh. brought this up a few times. Okay. And, uh, so, by friendlies. Okay, the and, friendlies and, yeah, entrance. Yeah, the friendlies okay, entrance, and it's been over a year. Yeah, if, you, if, if right near Figaro's, you'll see a portable that's light, light standard. No, it's up. not his. Yeah. That, that's what happened with Figaro's, uh, if I may in, okay, intercede. Yeah. My understanding in, in my travels mm -hmm. is that that is Figaro's light. That's not the mall. That is his light because the mall people have cut lighting down. So he went and got his own portable light. And that's his personal light that he's put up to keep make sure his customers are safe. Uh, so what I it's not the mall corporation. So, so when I was told in, in my travels that the mall put that out there, and somebody's supposed to turn it on every night. That was Figaro's, and Figaro's supposed to turn on every night. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know what's going on with it, but it should be resolved. Yeah, that's something the only has to happen. Area. We'll definitely bring that up. Okay. Correct. Yeah. But I'm thinking, if it was over by Figaro's, maybe it was over by where they had the out di outside dining. No, it's on the other side. No, it's actually in the, the roadway. Side. Yeah, it's actually out like to light up yeah. the street. Very so, strange. I mean, if that's fine, if it works and they pulled a the permit and everything's you know building inspectors yep. and everybody's fine with it and it's safe, because there's also a sidewalk right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know if it's you know, it just needs to be looked at. I think Commissioner Lamo brings up a really good point. Um, I've had some complaints given to me. People are getting nervous at night because the lighting has been drastically cut down in that parking lot. Yep. I'm not sure if we have any jurisdiction or whether it's a safety issue, but if staff could just look into that. It's it's it is starting to get to be unsafe, even on the side over where Target is. Right, Mr. Chair, you're correct. It's not just the entrance. There's right. other areas right. too. Right, right. The, within the lot itself. Yeah, over by Targets in the back where. Um, Party City. Oh, thank you. I was going to say Party World, but whatever. Party, Party City. Yeah. Um, so, again, they've cut back on their lighting. It is a private lot, but, you know, maybe there is something we can uh, intercede on. No, Mr. They're, Chair. they're required to have lighting. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, Mr. Regardless of who put that light there, it's there because the parking lot isn't lit, yes. which is the landlord's responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Right. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the mall is the landlord anymore of Figaro's property. It's not a Figaro's no. property, though. No, they're, it's the main they're all under the same condi uh, overall conditions. Conveyance. Okay, but the ownership may the ownership vary. may have changed with that particular ownership piece. may vary, but yeah. they still have the, the required conditions throughout. Right, and that was that 30-page document that we Correct. put on file. Yes. So it's like a exactly condo that. thing, yeah. right? Right. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to exactly. maintain. Exactly. Okay. What's it called? A convenient? What's the uh, It's like condition. Pop, proper name for the document? It's condition. like a condo uh, yeah. kind of thing yeah. where everything has to be maintained. Yeah. Yeah. So when we approved those 13 lots, we made sure <laughs> that that document was filed in the yeah. town clerk's office. Okay. okay. For sure. Do you okay. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to add, yeah. add for the record yeah, all the other... Uh, things are valid, and also just to add, there is also yeah, the bus stop, so the Enfield yeah, uh, yeah. Transit, CT yeah. Transit. So You're right. I think we have even more jurisdiction as a town, and yeah. I'm honestly the state too, being yeah. a yeah. state. We forgot about bus the bus stop. stop. Thank you, Commissioner yeah. D'Antonio. Don't forget the, the the bus from Hartford's back and forth. The commuter buses. Look right there. The one with the, the, did you figure out the name of that document? What, what, what was it? Covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Right, go. which is on file. Yeah. So I think we can fall back to that. <laughs> so we just gave you some more work. All right. See, no, don't you like, don't you like our meetings, Matt? <laughs> we got nothing to do. No worries. <laughs> Laurie, thank you. Thank you very much. Right, is there any other uh, commissioner's correspondence or correspondence in general or comments? Seeing none, director of planning report. Chapter, so um, I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I've been hearing. So we'll probably be focusing on the housing. Um, I'm speaking with Ellen, and this was just between she and I today, and I don't know whether um, she's discussed this with the council yet, but um, we'll probably have the public speak, ask their questions, and then we will take those and answer them when the Planning and Zoning Commission has their public hearing. Okay. I don't know we should really be doing back and forth. So. Okay. So that was today's discussion. That could change. 
<laughs> I, yeah, I had a quick question on that while we were talking about the POCD. Now, the council has to accept, or, or no, hopefully not, or reject it or parts of it. Will they be doing that Monday night, or is that going to, would you happen to know if that's going to be another agenda item in a different I council I honestly night? don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Just curious if you would. I, theoretically, they, they could, but they could also just, um, you know, take Table. what they hear and go back to their next meeting and, yeah. and do something at that point. Okay. Thank you. Pro Mr. Just Lyman? a process question for you? You yes. probably know. So yeah. as this goes forward yes. and there is some comments and there's, say, changes to be made, who yeah. makes the changes? Go back to the committee? No, we do. The committee is dissolved. Okay, committee's done because I missed all that part when I was so, out. So they're discharged. So let me, uh, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. I, yeah. Please, so thanks, please, if you yeah, will. Thanks for the question. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we went. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Gonna, I'm just going to repeat I, I, what I did and last I, night. And I was, I was out, so, so I missed so that. So here's piece. the process, and please, staff, interrupt me if I'm correct. Yeah. So um, the town council has a public hearing on a POCD. They're going to take comments. They have the absolute right to make recommendations to us to make changes to the POCD. All right? And they make recommendations to us whether we can take or, or disregard. Having said that, they also have the statute right. They have to approve the POCD mm -hmm. or reject it in whole, or they can reject sections, all right? So then it would come back to us, and we would then discuss those recommendations or the reason why they did whatever action. Hopefully, it's not a negative action. We could add their changes or comments or alterations that they would like to the document. But then if they rejected any of that document, we would have to override them by two-thirds vote of the seven, not, not the ten. The alternates, unfortunately, don't get to vote on this unless they were sitting that night. So we would need five affirmative votes to override the council's rejection if they, if, and hopefully they don't, if they rejected any, all of or any portion of. Does that make sense to everybody? Did I miss anything? No. No. And you, did, you said that very well. well you you know, got it. That's what happens when you're a policy wonk. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> so, right, <Kenny. laughs> and, and just so but when all that goes into this, yeah. It's still then we have to submit it to right, the state. Right. But it's still not a binding document. No, it's it a, doesn't supersede it's, the zone. It's, it's, it's it is just, a guide. It's, it's a guide. So let me, miss, let me finish a point. Right. Let me clip another point. So it gets used in this forum a lot. Yeah. So let me, let me finish if Please I can. Please do. So we're at that point where we finally get to the point among ourselves where we wouldn't make any changes if we have to make any at all. We, we do whatever we have to do. We have a finished document. Then it has to get presented to the state of Connecticut Office of Management and Budget. They have the right to accept it or reject it. If they reject it because we haven't fulfilled all the state statutes the way they deem it, well, we're up a oh, horse's creek, okay? I'm not even sure what the action at that point is. Are we go back to square one or make the changes the state wants us to do? So hopefully we don't get to that point, okay? But it is a planning document. <clears throat> right, so on its... On its um, we meet as a planning commission, not as a zoning. Right, so on its, enforce, on its teeth, I would say, I use the word teeth for it. You know how if we vote no on something, on a particular application, yeah. if you vote no, you have to give the reason why you vote no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you just say, I'm voting no just because of the PLCD, that's it? Being is not a binding document? That's where I get confused. No, with this I don't thing. think you can. I think the, uh, my and please correct me. My interpretation, <clears throat> you know, not, and again, I'm not a land use expert at all. That the planning and zoning can be used as one of many reasons, but not as the reason. That's how it was defined to me. And maybe I'm oversimplifying here. So if you were going, voting against something, something right. You're required to say why. The POCD could be maybe one of two or three reasons, but not the reason. Same thing on approval. Right. It, can, right. it can't be the reason because the POCD says it. So I guess I am, we're answering my question. It's not a binding document. You can't say I'm voting no because of the you don't meet the POCD because you could probably get that's, jammed up in litigation. I, I don't want to say absolutely yes. That's a question for yeah, staff. I, I, I think that that's been my interpretation and understanding is the POCD is a guiding document. It's, 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 it proposes um, items to be changed or proposes um, tasks that can be accomplished to meet a goal, right? So we want to have more dog houses in town. <clears throat> but we need to have chickens. We, 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 no, I, did, I deliberately didn't say chickens. 
we have so, to laugh a little. So, but right to. now we only allow you know four dog houses right. per household. So, but but we want to have more. So we need to modify our regulations to allow more dog houses. So that's so that's a goal, and it t it says in order to reach that goal, you need to modify your regulations to allow this. So that's kind of the way it works. Okay. Is these are just kind of um, goals within each of the elements: housing, community development, mm -hmm. infrastructure, uh, okay. residential, whatever. Right. And it from those goals, we come up with ways to implement them. Mm -hmm. Well, then I do see now, some. We uh, don't have to do them all. Exactly. So I do see some value in it because we're going to be going over our zoning regulations. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we look at that document yeah. Yeah. and take suggestions from it. So there is value there. Right. Absolutely. But it's not a binding document. It's a guide. Absolutely. So, Thank, yeah. Right. And so basically, I mean, when we when we work when we first started working on it, we took our old one, yeah. our old POCD, and we said, okay, Inland Wetlands Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, ZBA directors every director in the town here's what was in the last plan here's what your goals were here's what was implemented here's what was not implemented what do you want to see in the new one and that's what we took put it into the new pocd and that's where we're at now okay well thank you i i all my questions were answered and good information yeah it's a little confusing sometimes it yeah can be. I, it is. I, I think if yeah. mr chair i think we we all get confused sometimes when we hear an applicant they often refer to right in in, in accordance with the pocd uh their application is not made in accordance with the pocd it's made in accordance with the planning and zoning regulations uh, correct and, and that's really the the binding document. Yeah. The POCD the, is that that guideline, yeah. uh, and so forth. Yeah. But the, it's the, not what we should base our our sole opinion right. on. Right. Okay. I mean, just the fact that we call it a, a guideline. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. Yeah. very telling. I mean, it, it's 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 kind of like you know our goals for the future. Yeah. It's our 10-year plan. What what would we like to see happen in the next 10 years? Will we be able to accomplish it all? Probably not. Very but, few towns do. I, I agree with. Commissioner Petronello, though, it does get thrown around in this room a lot, right. like it's the but gospel. It, it, it certainly helps Bait. an applicant standing <laughs> with their application mm -hmm. if it does meet yeah. the plan. Right, gives them more credibility or more. It, sure. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Words matter sometimes, and sometimes they don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, right? That, you know what I mean? Oh, right. and thank you for the hard copy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah thank no you problem. very much. Uh, any, other, any other questions? Yeah, Commissioner Marshall? A lot of effort has gone into preparing that oh, document. No, that's yes. a heck of a lot of effort. It is a lot of work. No, I, thank you again for the hard copy. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You know, if I can, I, wanna, I just want to pick up what Karan said since we, we, we are, we've are, we got a couple minutes. We're early. So I do want to mention what Karan, I was going to kind of say this for March 23rd, and I'm going to say, say it again. And I said it at a meeting I was at last night with Ginny, um, Commissioner Higley. You know, this is one of many POCDs I've had the chance to see in, in my lifetime, and a POCD truly is a collaborative document. And I'm going to be quite frank, it's made up of Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, progressives, economists, people in the ecology, right, conservation committee, agricultural committee, um, people who want to invest in the town, people who want to d develop the town, bankers, uh, real estate developers. So it really is a climate group and that committee was first formed, what, two and a half years ago, probably, yeah. at least. This has been ongoing for a while, two and a half. So it is really a composite of the community. So there was a lot of thought that went into this. I know it was difficult with this one because it had Zoom meetings. We had the COVID. It trailed off. It picked back up. Um, but when you think of the makeup, and the makeup did change over the two and a half years. Mm -hmm. like, I, like myself personally, I got on in, in this past January, a year ago. Um, but it really is a snapshot of the community that participated in this. So it wasn't like four people sitting in the back room drawing this up and saying, here, here it is. That wasn't the case at all. I know, Karan, you were on it. You know, so uh, I just want to make that point to anyone who's listening, that this was not you know, three or four commissioners and staff sitting behind and drawing this thing out. Um, this was well thought out, and there, there are pieces people are going to agree to and pieces that people aren't. So I just, just wanted to make that statement for the record. One more process question. I think we were like a couple years late. So when we get this gets approved, does the clock start now, or does it retroactive back? So we only have eight years, or do we have a full ten? 
since at this point we have a waiver, I believe that we will be able to start the clock when we actually adopt and, nice. and OPM uh, agrees. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Anything else on a director planning report? Um, we were talking about the um, the solar panels. Um, and Matt and I both agreed. It was like, oh, we could probably go in and just look at that and just change a word. There's a couple things in there that we need to look at at a little bit more greater depth. Okay. Um, so we didn't have anything prepared for you tonight for, okay. because of that. So I was like, oh, wait a second. What does this mean? And <laughs> Matt's like, I don't know. Let's go ask the building official. <laughs> so. Um, just yeah. because of that, we want to make sure that we give you a proper yeah. document. And, and I also want to just make sure that everybody's on board. Yeah. You want to change this to allow these, um, the solar panels on a piece of property, on a roof or whatever, for rent. So basically, we're, they're renting their roof to a company for the, to place the solar panels so they can gain the energy. But that, that person's still making money. So instead of energy, they're getting a stipend, essentially. But it's promoting solar energy. Yeah. Well, we have two op we, I think we have, on this, I think we talked about last meeting or the meeting before. I think we have two options with this one. <laughs> I think either A, we need to change the regulations so that um, staff's not in a, in, a, in a precarious situation, mm -hmm. be quite frank with you. Mm -hmm. Or we need not to change the regulation, which means and then Rick's got to do some kind of enforcement. So right. um, we, those are really the only two options with just the way our regulation is currently uh, mm -hmm. written. I thought there was consensus the last time we talked about it that we didn't want to get into the micromanaging of this particular situation. We were willing to change the regulation. Yeah. So. Right, and, and excuse me, so, Mr. Chair, the, yeah. the, basically we're looking at, you know, it requires direct consumption. Yes, I mean, for direct consumption, yeah. yes. So. So let's, 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 you know, since we have some time here, let's take some comment. Do we want to get into the, and help me out here, the business of enforcing this so that people have to be charged as a home business <clears> if, they're, <throat> if they're getting this type of situation? Or do we want to change the regulation so that this is treated just like someone who's renting their garage out to somebody else? I'll go around the horn. Nick first. I think we should make it as easy as we can for the homeowner. So um, I, I don't think we need to start creating uh, home businesses for this. Okay. Vinny? I also agree. Um, th th this is their decision, I, w I would think. Okay, so you want to change the regs, so, yeah. Yeah. Chris? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the same page. It's, uh, okay. I mean, I almost kind of, the garage is an example, or like yeah. somebody like doing business, making money inside their home on their computer, like that's not, that's not you know, as long as it abides by the, the physical use, like the physical, yep. you know, that, that's what matters to us is the way I see it. Right. Yeah, I think. Changing the regulations to make it easier on the homeowner to either do one or two things. One is to rent out the roof. I'm fine with that. It need not be considered a certain specific type of occupation because if the homeowner is receiving credit in electricity kilowatts or just dollar value, what's the difference? Yeah. So, Agreed. to me, allow them to proceed as if nothing has changed, but we will, in the meantime, look at our regulations with an eye to making it easier yeah. and not consider this as a specific categorized occupation that they're doing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement uh, uh, with the same. It, it's, it's, I don't think we should be uh, uh, getting involved with that, but it, it, I'm all for, you know, the homeowner making a, that decision themselves and, uh, to do what they want with their property and, and so forth. Okay. Yeah, I guess it, I want to back up a little bit. So what do we currently have? Because people are just doing it and without a problem. Why is this coming up? So, so what, what's happened is there's um, some solar companies out there that are going around and renting roofs 
putting the solar panels on and take and they're taking the energy. Residential roofs? Yeah. Yes. They're taking the energy, but they're giving the homeowner a stipend for renting the roof. Oh. oh. So so oh. It, it and and our regulations say that it has to be direct consumption yeah. for the homeowner. Yeah. yeah. And that's how it should be. Let the homeowner have the public. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that was going on. I see them going up, and I figure people are yeah, so, getting so a reduction a in their feed. kilowatt hours. Either we're going to either we're going to make it, either we're going to change the regulations so it allows people to do that, mm -hmm. or we're going to have to regulate it as a home business. Which one would you like? Not a home business. No. Okay. I'm the dissenting vote. I think it should be a home occupation. Okay. If that's like a five dollar fee, Rick Rick signs it off, and off you go. And you don't have to change anything. Hmm. Mr. Helensky? In general, I, I'm in favor of having the homeowners make their own decisions on this. However, I see kind of a minefield. I mean, what happens when you sell the house? You know, I mean, do you own the solar panels? Yeah. And is the, is the prior owner obligated to continue the rental? No. No. I'm, I'm not sure if that's really a zoning issue. Well, I know. I mean, because I, know. Right, just, I, I don't I'm think that they own it. General, yeah. I'm not even sure with direct zoning. consumption, I don't believe that they own it. Okay, so I can just see kind of a minefield with that. But I guess if you have a contract that states all that kind of stuff, with, you know, with your provider, then that's basically up to the homeowner. Okay. I concur. I, I believe we should change the regulations. I don't, I don't want to leave staff on the bind on this. Yep. I don't want to regulate it as a home industry. So. Unfortunately, Commissioner Haley. Oh, I was a dissenting vote. You're dissenting vote. So it's there's a consensus here. Nine that want to change the reg, whenever you're ready to get that going. Well, and, <clears throat> as quickly as we can. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, because in the meantime, there. Yep. Yeah. I, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And meanwhile, we'll probably just sign off on the zoning permit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meantime, we're letting. The, the companies, when people engage with them, they, they do all the. They come to the town hall anyway, right? If a company, if a person engages with a company to get consumption. The company that comes well, to pulls the proper permits. permits. Yeah, that all happens. So we yeah. kind of got a handle on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other opportunities? Are there some director of planning report? I think I'm done for now. Thank you. Okay. Any <laughs> opportunities to unresolve issues? Receipt of applications. I know we have two of them for next, next meeting. Well, yes, yeah, so we've got two that we're receiving. Um, SPR 1910, which is 481 Enfield Street. This is um, actually just a, a restaurant in a use in a tenant space that had never had a restaurant before. But this is the pierogi queen. Yep. So the our wonderful pierogi uh, makers over mm -hmm. here on the corner on Alden Avenue. So they're not actually leaving that space. They're leaving the kitchen space, but I think they're maintaining the 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 catering banquet facility, but they need a larger space for um, cooking. So they're going to be going there. Um, and then PH 3057, which is 90C Elm Street. This is an application for hybrid retail cannabis establishment. Willowbrook Enfield LLC doing business as Zen Leaf Enfield applicant. Um, Enfield Square Realty LLC. Enfield CH LLC and Field Nessum LLC owner, Map 43, Lot 27, BR Zone, um, otherwise known as the Outback. <laughs> so we'll probably have those at the, at the next meeting. So, so um, that actually, they're going to be scheduled for 3-9. That second one? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, but we had uh, re requested them to just modify some of their maps to make it clearer. Yeah, the question, what is hybrid retail versus plain old retail? So, well, the hybrid with cannabis means that you are selling both pharmaceutical and recreational. That's the hybrid. So one is health related, the other is recreation. It's a matter of opinion. <laughs> your question? He's a good diplomat. Did en look through chair. Did Enfield receive a, a uh, approval from the state? Did we get the lottery? For are we ready to go? Yes. Would, Enfield got it. The lottery. So, so this yes. was not part of the lottery. Oh, the lot okay. This, this, yeah. There's like two. Two, two branches. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We may get a lottery one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. I, I want to win the lottery. Yet. 
have to go to Maine. Yeah. Any other questions or concerns or comments? Entertain a motion for adjournment. Well, I move to adjourn. <clears throat> motion made by Commissioner Higley. <laughs> Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. All those in favor? Sing by aye. saying aye. Aye. The record shows unanimous. This meeting is closed. The uh, plan zone meeting is closed at 7.55.